I took lessons from a guy, his name was Curtis Newtall. He's from Chicago, but he lives in um, North Carolina. And he's a, he's a badass drummer, but he, he was the drummer who, like I would bring him videos of people, like I'd be like, how the fuck is Dennis going fast? And he would show me, you know what I mean? I'd be like, how is this person doing this? And he, we would work it out. And so he was a, a real milestone for me because he opened me up to like being able to understand what I was seeing. You know what I mean? Like I think that's I think that's the main thing. Like if you can if you can understand it and you maybe can sing it, you can play that shit. You know what I mean? A lot of times it's all about understanding or having an idea of what it is. And that kind of goes to my conversation when people says is this talent or a gift? You know what I mean? I'm like, that's a fucking stupid question. <laughs> because in my opinion, in my opinion, the gift, the gift, the gift, honestly, the gift is the idea. It's like, I want to fucking play the drums. That's the fucking gift. Because so you have an idea in your, your head planted. That's why when you see these little kids and they can play is because they want to fucking play. Not because they are any different from y'all. They just want to fucking play. And they practice all day and they don't have jobs. You know what I mean? They don't, they say fuck PlayStation and they fucking play the drums. Yeah. And that's what I did. So yeah. he basically kind of like opened Pandora's box with me. And then um, I also took lessons from Rafredo Ray Sr. And I still take lessons from him. He's like fucking eighty something years old, dude. He like, he's it's like crazy, dude. I be looking at him and literally wanting to cry because he's so fucking old and he's been teaching me forever. You know what I mean? And I'm like, god damn it. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's crazy because like, yeah. Especially when you have people who are influencing you, like they don't know their influence on you. Like they don't know how. Yeah, important they are. They don't know. They don't. They probably do. He probably knows, but they don't know how I feel about it. You know what I mean? So he was one of the guys that really showed me a lot of the Afro-Cuban shit. He's like, "You're a black motherfucker. You should know this." <laughs> <laughs> so we would go. We would go over a lot of shit, and he he was the guy who got me into like Changuito and fucking. <laughs> fucking all those guys because I just named all the guys from where I live. He was getting me into people who lived in Puerto Rico and Cuba and all these fucking places and he was actually bringing them to the house. They would go play the club that my mom take me to and he would say go to my house. So I would be in the house with fucking Giovanni at like 15 and this motherfucker be going ham and I would just literally be like you know just soaking this shit up and that's kind of kind of why you see me bounce around from gig to gig. You'll see me go do a rock gig, and then you'll go see me do a hip hop gig, and then you'll see me do a jazz gig. And the main reason is because my grandmother always made me learn all different fucking styles of music. And it's paid off. It's paid off a lot. Because if no one's fucking making money doing rock, I could fucking go play rap shit. You know what I mean? So that's what I do. And it keeps me, <coughs> it keeps me inspired because I get to meet people like you guys. I get to come here. I get to hear you guys' traditional music. Then I get to go to fucking Argentina. I get to do playing a bumba drum. They play guitar. I'm getting, I'm soaking up all kind of different cultural music, and it's all <coughs> connected. So then, when I get a call like the Mars Volta, where I'm playing yeah. rock and playing hard rock beats and then weird odd meter shit, and then salsa. I could do that shit. You know what I mean? I always got a fucking job, basically, is what I'm saying. So that's my advice to you. One uh, one piece of advice is to learn as many styles as possible. But like, try to play that shit like you actually mean it. Like, don't play jazz like Neil Peart, ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? He just sucks at it. You know what I mean? So, you know, what he does, he kills it. But on the other shit, it just sounds like ass. So like, if you see you sound like ass playing some other shit, practice the fuck out of that. Go look at the people who really do that shit. You know what I mean? Um, I want to know, uh, what's your process of creation um, with Volta, with Special, the album, the Batman, yeah. the So how, how was the process of um, 
some songs where it was OR, like, I got a riff, a minimal riff as fuck, like minimal and shit. And me and the bass player trying to make this shit cool. So we'll go through the gauntlet of, like, we'll, it'll be like some shit, like you'll be playing, um, 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 you'll be playing some shit. And you'll be like, instead of playing that on the hi hat, play them the crash. She'd be like, and like, we'll play it a few times, and I'll listen to it, and I'm like, I could probably do this a little bit crazier. And so I'll fucking fuck with it until it's just like nuts. You know what I mean? So I'll be like, Bro, it's like painting. You know, you ever seen somebody paint and they paint in layers? Yeah. Where you're like, man, how this shit looks so amazing? Because they paint in layers. So I'll go and have a bare minimal idea and I'll just expand on it. Just see, just the same way with this uh, the, the the fucking drumming no rudiment shit where I was like, right? I just keep expanding on the shit. Dude, I don't, I don't have a day job, bro. Like, so, like, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm, and I'm a fucking perfectionist, bro. So I'll sit there and I just, I like, somebody will like this shit and I'll be like, that shit is trash. And I'll just do it until I fucking like it. And that's why in the Mars Volta they liked me because I wasn't lazy about it. Like, I would fucking, I wanted the shit to be fucking sick. I wanted it to be like, what the fuck? And so the first record, I wanted to kill everybody in the studio. <laughs> like literally, I was fucking mad. And um, I was more I was more mad because they were asking me to do all this shit and then they were putting the handcuffs on me at the same time. Because I'm like, I can play all this shit, that's not the issue, but like can I tune my own drums? Can I fucking touch the snare? Like I don't like the way the snare sounds. So and and it would be like like we would play some shit and I'm a perfectionist as fuck, but sometimes sometimes people don't know what they want. So you be in the studio with a person and say, do it again. What the fuck are you not hearing? <laughs> I don't know. Just do it again. You're like, okay. Now this is now this that's at that's after four times. Now at eight at eight you just want to fucking you just fucking throw shit at the drums and walk out. You know what I mean? Like I'm hell of emotional. I don't give a fuck. And so I would sit there and just be livid because they would just be. It was like he was fucking with me. Like, it was like, you're fucking me. And then it'll be, we'll finish that song. It'll be Monday. Wednesday, it'll come along. He'll be like, can you play the chorus to the song you just played seven times again? He'll be like, are you fucking serious? 